SourceFed's book club, SourceFed Nerds book club. Well, SourceFed, SourceFed Nerd, we're all in the same family. Um, And I don't know if you guys could tell, but we definitely have not forgotten our towels. No. Because you today we are talking about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yay! And my yay is a very new yay because I was not familiar with Hitchhiker's Guide yeah. to the Galaxy. I knew there was a movie of it. I know it's very beloved. Right. I had just never read the book. So yeah. when we said we were going to well, go for book club, the, I was like, awesome. The movie's not so beloved, but the really? book is very beloved. Oh, I know yeah, people movie, that beloved that well, movie. Well, I like the movie <laughs> a lot, and but I just, uh, a lot of people didn't because they felt like it was very rushed and okay. it well, wasn't. Uh, there's a lot you got to get in there. Um, So if you have not had a chance to read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you can do that on audible.com. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's where we listen to it. In fact, it was narrated by the amazing Stephen Fry, who's just freaking hilarious yeah. and amazing. And if you're going to listen to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy read to you, you must have Stephen Fry read it to you because he's, he's just so awesome. Uh, you know what? He's hilarious. He's and hilarious. I, I understand the book is hilarious, which is something the that I learned. Funny, I yeah. didn't know that going in, that this was going to be a book that legitimately made me laugh yeah, out loud. Yeah. But I was listening to it in the office, and I literally, at the first time they said 42, I went, ha! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you get 42! Yeah! Trisha now gets 42. Yay, everybody. Let's let a round of applause. And Trisha now gets 42. I, do, I know. I'm I so love happy. it. 42 is the best. I love it. And also, like, Hilarious. we have to talk about so um, there are actually other options for narrators on Audible yeah. for Hitchhiker's Guide, but come on. Why not? What you got to do, Stephen Fry. No contest. Anyway, Douglas <laughs> Adams wrote The Hitchhiker's Guide to the mm -hmm. Galaxy. Douglas Adams was amazing, a super funny guy. To me, when I first read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy years ago, yeah. it was the first book I had ever read where I actually laughed yeah. out loud while reading it. And That's I never laughed while reading a book, and ever. You know what's funny? As I was reading it, like, or as I was listening to it, I was thinking, this is 100% Steve's type of humor. Yeah, it's like, very, I mean, it's very, it's British, it's very British humor, too. It's a lot, actually, a lot of parts of it reminded me of Monty Python. Yeah, yeah, very python Very, very specifically, just the silliness. Just yeah. utterly silly for the sake of being silly, yet somehow still managing to have an overriding point of right. some sort. And the story is about a character named Arthur Dent, mm -hmm. who is just kind of like your everyman, kind of a simple, like almost like a Bilbo Baggins, you could say. Like that's why he's an kind of, everyman. I don't know. I, I I feel like yeah. I he's, mean, he's I guess he's your Bilbo. underdog protagonist. He's kind of your underdog. He's just a simple guy. He just likes Regular to drink his dude. tea and enjoy his breakfast and go to the pub every once in a while. And <laughs> it's about him and how his life gets completely turned upside down. Oh, not yeah. Not Fresh Prince style. His <laughs> friend that he's known for years. He does not go to Bel Air. No, he does not go to <laughs> Bel Air. Uh, his, his friend that he's known for years named Ford Prefect. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend that he's known is actually, is actually an alien <laughs> that was disguised as a human on Earth and lived amongst the humans. There's apparently a lot of those we come to find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. But I love, did you really like how the way, because I'm I'm used to, I read the book years ago and I okay. forgot all about it, yep. but I love the BBC television series version of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, so the radio play. The, well, there's, a, so here's the thing. There's tons of there's things. There's like 12 versions of yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide to the yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the best part about that is, is that they're all different. And purposefully, Douglas yeah. Adams approves the differences of each one and actually had his hands That's in every single cool. one, including the movie before he died. But um, the, so the book, I'm used to the BBC series more than the book because I watched okay. the BBC series over and over and over and over and over again. Talking about all the different ways that you can appreciate this story, I took it home to Jen, said, I grew up with the radio play. It's part okay. of my childhood, but I still adore it as an adult. I love the randomness. Yeah, I mean, I I think the radio play brought some of the actors into the BBC That's TV cool. series, but I'm not 100% sure. That's very but, cool. Um, <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide is just one of those sci-fi staples. It's like, once you yeah. read it, instantly a, a million new doors open up to references in, I don't know, Futurama, yeah. uh, uh, Doctor Who, um, just, just any sci-fi <laughs> movie of the last... 20 years or 40 years has some sort of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy dash See, in See, I'm so excited now that I'm gonna get those. Yeah, yeah. people people really revere it. At Whiskey it's Samurai beautiful, beautiful 7 book. says, you mean the holy, most remarkable book ever to come out of the great publishing house of Ursa Minor? <laughs> Yeah, that's where the well, that's where the the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy comes from. Right, and and I know um, 
some of you who maybe haven't read the book or don't mm-hmm. know about the book, you know, it doesn't sound too interesting. It's just like Hitchhiker's That's Guide to the I Galaxy. That's what I always thought. That's why I had never really, yeah. like, there's so many things on my to-read list. I just hadn't gotten around to it because I didn't know what it was about. Well, I I, I wanted, I want you to know that the, 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 the origin of the story and the book in general <laughs> Tell us, is hilarious. Steve. Douglas Adams was drunk off his ass, laying in a field, looking up at the sky, <laughs> at the stars, and he was mm-hmm. reading a uh, a guide to, I believe it was a guide to London or a guide to Ireland or something. Okay. It was like a guidebook to like some part of the country. Okay. And he just thought it was the stupidest thing and the funniest thing. So he was like, what if we made a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? And then that's where the whole and thing bizarre. ballooned from. Yeah. And it, so anyway, story, let's, we're getting way mm-hmm. off track here. Story is Ford Prefect is an alien on Earth. Oh, what I wanted to say was, is did you think it was funny that Ford Prefect was disguised on Earth as a as a Broadway actor or as like a theater actor. <laughs> oh, so he they're weird enough, so I guess yeah. you can get away with. Well, he was like confusing people by looking like an actor, I guess. And at one point, when he's pulling out the the Hitchhiker's Guide, or uh, when he's gonna pull out his like electronic thumb mm-hmm. to hitchhike, he uh, throws away his copy of uh, Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat because he's not gonna need it where he where he's going. That's true, he doesn't need. But um, it. I just love. Is how that your favorite part? No, my I've got What's way too many favorite. Uh, I don't know. I have way too hard. Actually, I think my favorite part is when they press the improbability drive just mm-hmm. before the missiles are about to hit them. They change the, the improbability drive changes the missiles into uh, two bowls of petunias. Yeah. And then it turns. Oh no! It turns one into a bowl of petunias. Oh yeah. And then the other one into a whale. Here, yeah. At, and the whale at is Ugg, my favorite part of the entire book. At Ugg, effort of this says. The whale in the pot of petunias falling through the sky is one of the funniest literary moments ever. Funniest thing written <laughs> ever. And in fact, there's so many funny things in the book. See? And Douglas Adams is so cynical and he's like, he's, he's, right? Like he hates. See, my favorite parts, and I'm not sure if it was, uh, I'm sure it's a combination of the way Douglas Adams wrote it and the way that Stephen Fry delivered it. But the funniest moments for me were all the suspenseful buildups. Yeah. And then just like the drop, like when it's so suspenseful when they're meeting, um, how do you pronounce his name? Zephod? Zephod. Zephod. Zephod Beeblebrox. Yeah, okay, so when they're, yeah, when they're, when they're talking to Zephod for the first time, and Arthur's just like silent as the other two are going back and forth, and then Arthur's like, we have met. Philip. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh yeah, we met at a party, huh? And Earth you stole yeah. the girl I was trying yeah. to get off with. Uh, that was hilarious to me. And yeah. forty-two. Forty-two is fantastic. Was I love it. I chapters love it because... and chapters of buildup. So okay, we so really quick again because a lot of you are like, what is this book? Just really quick. <laughs> basically, the, the Arthur Dent's home is about to be destroyed by bulldozers. Yeah, that's his whole life, and his whole life is like, oh, not my house. And then, ironically, space aliens are going to demolish the Earth at the same time. So, actually, mm-hmm. the funniest part about it is, is mm-hmm. they're they're destroying Arthur Dent's home so they could build a freeway, a bypass, yeah. a freeway through his house. They want a freeway mm-hmm. there, and then it turns out aliens are going to destroy Earth because they're putting they're a, a space, a space freeway. freeway there. <laughs> and I just love how they're like they make fun of everybody and everything, mm-hmm. and they're like. Well, the plans for the destruction of your home were in the Department of Civil whatever. Uh, you should have known about months it months ago. And he's like, "Yeah, I had to go down a, you know, a murky basement and use a flashlight. And then there was a door that said, "Beware the leopard." And like, it's and then so finally, random. in a locked cabinet, I found the paper <laughs> that said, "You know, my house is going to be demolished." Right. And then when the Vogons come to just to to plow yeah. the earth over, they're like. What, you, the, you guys are all freaking out because his, you didn't know the Earth was going to be destroyed? This strong? bulletin was sent out months ago. Yeah, it was, Wait, it 50, was, 50 human years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was on Ursa Minor. <laughs> Why didn't you go check it out? And then he's and then he's like, what, you've never been to Ursa Minor? That's not our fault. See ya. And then boom, end of the Earth. <laughs> Which is the craziest way to start a book. The Earth is destroyed. All humanity is destroyed yeah. and, and murdered and gone. So I just love it. I love it. And then from there, it just becomes this big, wacky adventure. It's we meet hilarious. Zaphod Beeblebrox, the guy with two heads and three arms. He's the president of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. And his girlfriend, Trisha McMillan. Trillion. Who, well, I'm um, Trillion, which she changed her name to. But yeah, her girl, his girlfriend, Trillion. And then, uh, you know, Ford Prefect and all the mm-hmm. creatures and things. And my favorite character in the whole book. 
Are you going to at the computer from no. the heart of well, gold? No. Yes. Well, actually, I'm conflicted now because the, the the voice of the computer in the heart of gold when you read it or when you hear it in the in the in the TV series or even in the movie, it, it just sounds like a normal it's thing. It's just or like whatever. a happy in to fact, help in kind the of movie, character. It's like a dude. It's like, "All right, we're coming up on Vogue, like, you know, okay. the Vogue sphere." So, I guess this is the like take your own liberties with this yeah, character. With Stephen character. Fry. Stephen Fry oh, nailed it. Stephen Fry made him fabulous. Yeah, I just love it. He was the most flamboyant, like just fabulous, happy. Person. He was amazing. But it my, made me laugh every time. Uh, my favorite character and is, possibly my favorite droid of all time is Marvin the Paranoid of Android. Course. Because he's so sad and it's so depressing. He has the brain, a brain the size of a planet. Yeah. He's the smartest thing and ever. And they just use him for stupid errands and well, he and it's his be, life. And, it's, and I love that the reason why he's so depressed and paranoid and sad is mm -hmm. because they tried to give robots <laughs> human emotions, but he was a prototype and they messed up. And so he's <laughs> depressed forever and he just wants to die and he hates life. And I just he's love him. He's pretty funny. And he just so happens to be the subject of one of my favorite Radiohead songs, Paranoid Android, from the album OK Computer. And there's lines from the book in that song. When I am king, you will be first against the wall, which is another funny part of the book because they say it again and then they do. It's just Speaking of tangents, and meanwhile, um, <laughs> movie clever classy librarian actually sent in a video saying this. The aliens are such a weird, convoluted mess of species, all of them so unique and so weird and wonderful. And it just, it helps set the fact that the humor of this series and the humor of this entire franchise is based on it being random. It's based on petunias and pangalactic gull blasters and whales and just everything that you can think of. Pigs that say, can yes, of course you can eat my ribs, the third one on the left is the best. And it's just, it's weird and wonderful and 42 and scrabble. Another favorite part of my book mm -hmm. is when they first, when they first experience the improbability drive, <laughs> when they are ejected from the Vogon oh, ship. Oh yeah, that's a scary and moment. everything is happening. I like, like, I like how the first half of the book is just you're probably gonna die now, and now yeah. you're probably gonna die because this yeah. other thing. And next chapter, you're probably yeah. also going to die. I uh, yeah, I love it. It's so <laughs> that's the thing. The whole thing is so cynical and sarcastic and funny and ridiculous. But I just love how um, they when everything's changing. I think Ford becomes a penguin for a moment. Yeah, and then I love the way that they end he that scene. He liked being a penguin. He liked being a penguin. And then Arthur is holding this door shut. And there's all these monkeys, monkey hands, and he's like. Him. Yeah, there's, right? there's a, an infinite number of monkeys working on a version of Hamlet that they want us to work out. <laughs> or look at, which is the funniest shit ever. What and the also, uh, the babblefish. The babblefish is one of the fucking coolest oh, sci-fi devices me out. ever made. And don't watch the movie. Well, watch the movie, but it's creepy as hell because it, it it's this face that like creepy. slithers into his yeah, ear. It sounded but real the babblefish is just the it's genius. Douglas Adams mm -hmm. is a fucking genius. It just mm -hmm. it eats inorganic. Uh, unintelligible, it's, unconscious things and poops yeah. out languages. So you can hear every language and it when poops, it's in it, your out ear, poops your it out into your ear. ear. It's amazing. It's brilliant. And then. So it's kind of like a grown ups Dr. Seuss book. And, on some oh, level. yeah. And not only that, The Hitchhiker's Maybe. Guide to the Galaxy is essentially an iPad, if you think about it. Oh, yeah, it I is. I mean, it, it is because it's. And in fact, I believe Douglas Adams. Uh, made a, a real Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy dot com before he died. It was like, uh, whatever, wow. whatever the it, it was a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy dot com, and it was essentially Wikipedia before Wikipedia. Awesome. And he was uh, he was just gathering information. Is it just full of nonsensical space? No, things, no, though? it's real knowledge of real. the world. So it was meant to be yeah. a real Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Cool. But of course, Wikipedia came along and kind of destroyed that a little bit. Of but. course. Guys, thank you so much. We look, we loved Hitchhiker's Guide mm. to the Galaxy. Yeah. Again, it's one of those like staple sci-fi books that if you're a fan of anything space, anything sci-fi, mm -hmm. anything robotic, comedy, it's if you a love good time. humor, if, you if like you're laughing, a fan of laughing. If you're a fan of anything, <laughs> you need to read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, and listen to Stephen Fry narrating it. And, and if you want to listen to the one that Trish and I listen to, mm -hmm. you can go to audible.com slash sfnerd and uh, you can get your subscription to Audible so you can listen to the Stephen you Fry You get that first version. month free. Mm -hmm. Also, audible.com is doing a special right now on the book Legion Skin Deep. You can get that on audible.com slash legion after yeah. you've gone to audible.com slash sfnerd. And checked out Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because you got to do that first. Because it's awesome. 
Guys, don't forget your towel. Don't forget 42. And never uh, look at a dolphin and not think about its superior intellect and how it tried when to it, warn when us. When you see a dolphin flipping in the water, it's trying to warn you about an alien invasion. <laughs> yeah. So long and, and thanks for all the fish. And mice are smarter than you. Mice are smarter than us. Too many spoilers, though. Whatever, they read the book. Or listened to it. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm Steve Zaragoza. <laughs> I'm Trish Harrisberger. Like, subscribe, comment, all that fun jazz. And we will see you next time. Hashtag SFN Book Club. Yay. Bye, guys. Let's watch the movie. I gotta show you the movie. Okay.